it's, I don't think of it as a new font format, but as an extension to our existing format. And I think that we will um, we'll find plenty of, of good ways to utilize it and, and uh, practical solutions that we can, we can create with variable fonts uh, for, for existing problems. Uh, but I don't think of it as, a, as an entirely new format. Um, and I think that we won't necessarily be making all fonts as variable fonts. I think that there are particular uh, use cases for it, and they're many and varied, but uh, not everything needs to become a variable font. Although we've, we don't really know what the use cases are going to be yet. I mean, this is one of the exciting things about it, is that the use cases may be many more than we're expecting. Uh, That's true. All fonts are instantiated at the point when you read them. In the, you know, so, th so every font has an output of some kind. Uh, and because the output conditions vary, it makes sense we have variable fonts that are able to address the output conditions. So people immediately think, oh, you know, fonts on screen, responsive fonts in, uh, in CSS. Um, but there's also uses in, in print. Uh, for example, uh, different kinds of printers, uh, and this is something we see already uh, in say, newspaper printing where you have different grades of, of print that respond to different kinds of presses, different kinds of inks, um, even different printing environments in the case of you know, different countries having different uh, amounts of heat and humidity that affect printing output. So all those are things you know, we could conceivably be addressing via variable fonts. And no. even things like optical size will yeah. translate to print. Directly, yeah. Yeah. This year, at least, is mainly about the variable fonts. You know, it, it, since the announcement last September of OpenType 1.8, uh, everybody's been talking about variable fonts. Everybody's been experimenting with ways of making them, uh, of ways of using them. Yeah, and still we're in very early stages, but yeah, it, it's clearly the big excitement. Uh, if there is another trend, it's one that's a little bit older from the last few years, and that's color fonts that grew out really out of emoji, uh, the need to display emoji and to display icons, uh, and the fact that you could, doing it in a font is convenient um, because the emoji are being sent from phones to other phones as text. Uh, there was a need for a color font format. So there's a little bit of a trend around that. People now beginning to experiment with non-emoji uses for color, uh, you know, color display type faces and stuff like this. Uh, I'm still not convinced it's gonna be a big thing. Um, and certainly it, it's not gonna have the wide ranging industry impact that variable fonts are. Yeah, in fact, I I don't know if I've noticed the the color trend. I mean, I've I've noticed the <laughs> the proliferation of the formats, and I've seen a lot of talk about it. But, and I've seen just a handful of of actual color fonts. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess we're so small enough industry that a couple things <laughs> can create a trend. <laughs> Uh, I was asked this question a long time ago if, if I had you know, a, a favorite typeface, which I guess is the close, a similar question, and I, I, I couldn't narrow it down at the time uh, unless I had a category. So if, if, if I had a, if it was a display font, it would be uh, a monotype Casteller, which is one of my uh, favorite, uh, favorite display typefaces. But you probably don't need a display typeface on an island. <laughs> so I'm thinking it's going to be a text face because I'm going to do a lot of reading. I'm hoping. <laughs> and it's probably going to be Gaudi Deep Dean, which is one of my favorites. So I'm very practically minded. And I live on an island already, so I have some, some, some sense of what's <laughs> useful to have on an island. Um, but if it were a desert island, and, and you know, I didn't have many other ways to entertain myself than using a font, um, I'm not sure it's a specific font, but I would like a font that allowed me to typeset music, actually, um, because I would yeah. like to spend my time on the desert island inventing melodies and having some way of recording them, uh, in notation at least, uh, would be good. That's actually the first typeface I designed was a music typeface with oh, Steve fantastic. Madison. Yeah. Okay. Crescendo. Great. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 For the Atari application. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic. So you can have it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I can find it. Okay. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. <laughs>